We are back again to start this week with Taylor Bradford, as always, of the Gloucester Daily Times. How you doing, Taylor? Doing well. How about yourself? Doing great. All right, right off the bat, we have a real important story we want to touch upon. Right. So if you guys are entering into the city of Gloucester today, be ready to see people with signs and with masks. Um, there is a group of local teens in the area who are peacefully protesting that all black lives matter. And this is in response to the different police brutalities and social injustices that have been happening around our country over the past week and month, um, as we've been seeing different things with um, a variety of um, cases of um, Ahmad, Ahmad Arbery, we talking about George Floyd, um, these names that we're hearing over and over again as people raise awareness for um, just different people passing away due to injustices happening. And so these local teens have taken upon themselves to stand over at Grant Circle and with signs and kind of speak about what they're protesting peacefully. So saying, you know, we want to raise awareness that this is an issue and this is something that we need to be aware of in our city. And so these people will be out there today. They were over there on Saturday as well. And I was able to speak with a few of the young women who have organized this protest. And they have kind of talked about how for them this means so much. And of just what it means to grow up and live in the city of Gloucester. And to live during this time of both a pandemic and um, during a time of just extreme violence that's happening across our country. So they'll be meeting at Grant Circle from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. with the signs. And as we talked a little bit this afternoon about what was Saturday was like, they said they had a lot of support. A lot of people were bringing them food and just kind of saying thank you for them standing out there. But they also did receive um, uh, some varied responses of people yelling at them, of um, giving them some rather crude gestures, as they would describe. And so um, very mixed um, kind of responses from the community and so they're going to be back out there again again from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So if you're driving into Grant Circle, um, just know that they will be there with signs um, just raising awareness um, for communities around. So be aware of that and that will be later this afternoon and they also will be launching a organization for um, just to raise continue to raise awareness of not only Black Lives Matter, but also other um, justice, social justice issues that have been going on throughout our country over the course of years. So that will be coming later as they publish uh, social media platforms and different blog and Facebook posts. So, Taylor, there was um, a report that the Gloucester police might be um, there with them. Did you hear anything like that in support? I didn't. No. I didn't as of yet, um, but I'm going to be making my way over there at 3 p.m., so I'll definitely be able to um, confirm that when I go over and check it out. Great. And have you heard anything just through the Gloucester Times about the Gloucester Police Department's sort of position on this whole issue of um, the culture in police departments being part of the problem? Have you heard anything like that? So Chief Conley actually went on Good Morning Gloucester, I believe yesterday, um, and spoke a little bit about the, the police's response. And so um, talking about just, you know, police brutality and how um, we're seeing a varied responses throughout our country. And so, you know, Gloucester Police Department's response and, um, as you said, right, support of those who are looking to do the peaceful protests amongst our city. Um, so that's kind of what we have um, from watching those videos. And again, as we go out today, we'll hopefully hear more from them. And hold on one second, Corey, excuse me. Um, you did mention that there will be socially distancing and probably wearing masks, right? Correct. But was there any other, um, is there a sense of sort of cerebral balance among these kids that, wow, this is uh, an, an unbelievably, um, I mean, you recognize it or they recognize it, this is an important time, but the balance of this national pandemic with 100,000 you know, deaths across the country in contrast to these groups meeting to protest. Mm. You know, it's a stark difference. And, and the, the implications for COVID are really, um, are really large with all these, these huge gatherings. And any sense from the kids of what they should be thinking about that? Right. So I asked them the question of what does community mean during this time, right, that we both have a pandemic and we're also being called to come together 
in uh, support. And so what does that look like when we're kind of feeling the tension between the two? And so for these women, it truly was is that they've been seeing support and they're trying to find those creative ways in which to kind of speak out and raise awareness. And while COVID is such, uh, it's permeating throughout our entire culture, this seems to be more the forefront of their minds is, you know, uh, raising awareness that all Black Lives Matter um, and that the the deaths that have happened um, are unjust and that there needs to be an awareness um, of these situations and issues that are happening within our culture. And so it, it's interesting because you see them wearing masks and you see people, but that and they're keeping a distance, but then you see people protesting in other um, cities and towns who aren't. And what does that look like? And will we see a, a spike again because of this? And the question that I hear people asking me, right, is, is it worth is it worth doing the protests and having people in confined spaces if it means that there's going to be a spike? And I've heard a, very, a number of responses in both directions of yes and no. So it, it really seems that at this point in time in our history, we're, we're stuck at a, a point of wanting to come together, but also trying to keep a distance. And all are for, right, the seeking good and seeking um, justice, both within a pandemic and um, in support of one another. So, yeah, that's what I've heard. Um, again, I'm sure we'll kind of see as the months play out how both um, both affect us as a country and as a, as a nation. So, Well, thank you for asking them in a much more eloquent way than I was able to express that. Yeah. Uh, and then it's kind of ironic that um, these, you know, lovely, inspired young people are protesting peacefully, and yet the president just came out with a statement about a half an hour ago urging governors to use force with mm. presidents. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think it really speaks to the varied perspectives on what the situation is and how it should be handled. And and that's a, that's a hard thing when you, you have people who have seen force as a necessary way in which to create peace and those who are seeing, you know, peace as the way to create peace. And so It'll, it'll definitely be interesting to see how the weeks follow out. And I'm sure that both 1623 and Gloucester Times um, will see those and hear those from the community members as we continue to kind of get a get a temperature on how we as a, as a Cape Ann are responding to this and how the surrounding cities and towns are as well. Taylor, has been any word yet about whether this particular group plans on having a continuing a series of protests or are there other protests planned or have you seen any other groups in Cape Ann other than this particular group? Mm. Um, there's been some word that some other ones will be happening in uh, neighboring towns. Um, the details are still ongoing as of right now. And so as we find out, I'll, I'll definitely give you guys a heads up. Um, as we post and let people know that those are happening. This group in particular, when I asked them, they, they weren't sure as of right now, um, but they are looking to create that platform, like I said before, that will kind of be a soundboard for discussion and for raising awareness. And so I think that for them, kind of that being on, um, on the streets in protest is just one slice of the pie for them. And so kind of looking at how, how are they going to do uh, sustained awareness um, because standing in Grant Circle for them might not always be feasible, might not always be the most effective change that they want to see. And so definitely been hearing bits and pieces here and there. And I know that whether it's, if it's not on the streets, you go to people's Facebook pages, it is all over social media. Social media seems to be the platform which people are, are speaking out and kind of trying to, to keep things going. It definitely reminds me of the beginning of COVID, how we had everybody on saying how we support and how can we take care of each other. And we saw the ball rolling in Cape Ann. I think the same thing is happening with this is Black Lives Matter. We're seeing the ball rolling. And if you just scroll, everyone um, is voicing their opinions and kind of raising awareness and, and pointing to different local organizations and groups that might be able to support um, those who voices are unheard as of right now. So whether it's online or in person, people are finding their ways to, to make a noise, so. Well, let's hope everyone stays safe and healthy and gets their point across peacefully. And maybe Taylor, as this unfolds, maybe we'll tap on your shoulder a little more often this week just to stay on top of this. That sounds great. Looking forward to talking to you guys. Thank you, Taylor.